to show is the brightness level from the floodlight. So I'll put my hand in front of it. There you go. Hi there. So today we're unboxing an outdoor Wi-Fi security camera. So this particular one is by Reolink and the model is the Loomis model. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So a couple of things worth mentioning about this camera. Picture quality wise it's 1080p full HD. Has two way audio on there. You can get PIR motion alerts on there and it's IP65 rated so it's waterproof. It also has a built in floodlight on there. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so you know the routine. I've laid out everything I've got in the packaging, so let me quickly run through it one by one. You get a package here saying, be prepared, be Rio link, and it contains all the documentation you see there. You get an installation and setup manual, and flicking through this, this is multi-language. You get a warranty card, opening this up, it's multi-language, and it says you get two-year warranty, and you could get an extra six months if you register the product. You get a number of stickers, each one is in a different language, highlighting that video surveillance is in operation. You get a document which is multi-language, which is the declaration of conformity. You get a sticker which is used to help assist in installing the bracket for the camera. You get three raw plugs and three screws. You get a power adapter, the output on this is 5 volts, 2000 milliampers, and you can see there's no plug on there, so they give two adapters. So one is for the EU and the other one is for the UK and it just sits into place like so, and it locks into position. So it's simple as that. You've got the USB connection point there, so that's one thing to note. It's a USB connection on the camera. Next, we have the mounting bracket on here, so this can be adjusted, and then once it's in position, you just tighten this up even more so it doesn't move out of place. This does come off, but this is just to assist in tightening it up. So once you put the camera, there's a small hole on the back, just tighten it up, and then just twist it just to assist in getting it tight. There's two holes on the back and that's where the sticker comes in handy. You can see it matches up, so you just stick it into position. You can draw your two holes and then what you do, if I open this up, you just screw it into position. And once it's in, obviously just put this back again and then just tighten it up. And there you go. Let's take a look at the camera. So in terms of dimensions, it's nine centimeters tall by six centimeters by four centimeters deep. Build quality feels good, matte white finish all the way around, and you've got Rio Link on the side, Rio Link on the other side as well. On the front of it, glossy finish, you've got a floodlight at the top, there's also a status LED in there, the lens is just over here, you get a daylight sensor over here, built in microphone, PIR motion sensor here, and if we flip it around, you can see the speakers at the back. Coming underneath, you've got the point where you'd put a micro SD card. It doesn't come with one, just a note. And you've got a reset point there. If you look at the back, there's a point where you can put the mounting bracket on. So that just gets screwed straight onto the back. And that's how it is with the bracket on. Good build quality on this, and I like the fact it's quite nice and compact. Let's insert a micro SD card. So I've got one here, 32 gig. And if I open up the cover, it just slots in like so. And you just put it in until it clicks, and there you go. And then you just cover it back up again, and there you go. That's it. Let's make a start at setting up this camera. So I'm at my Android phone here. So now, if I click on the Play Store, the app we're after is Rio Link. That's the one. Get that installed. Once you've installed it, you'll be presented with this. And to get this going, let's click on the plus and we need to scan in a QR code on the camera. So the QR code's just at the side here. Now, let me get it plugged in. The plug's just over here. It's initializing at the moment. We just gotta give it a moment until it gives a voice prompt. Please run real link app. Add the camera and set it up. There you go. So next, let me scan in the QR code off camera. QR code scanned in. Let me select Wi-Fi not configured. Next, I'm gonna click, I've heard the voice prompt next to that. Now I need to enter my Wi-Fi password. So let me do that off camera. I've entered in my Wi-Fi password, let me click next. And now it's gonna present a QR code which we need to scan in on the phone. So let me do that next. Add the camera and set it up. Scan succeeded. Camera is connecting to your router. Please wait. You go, now I can say I've heard the voice prompt. Next to that. There you go, as simple as that, it's connected up. I'll say I've heard the voice prompt next to that. Connection to the router succeeded. Welcome to RioLink. Now it's saying first step, create a login password. So let me do that off camera. I've entered in a password, let me click next. Device settings, name your camera. I'll just call it camera. 
Next to that, initialization finish. So let me click finish. And there you go, it's set up, ready to go. So let me click on there. Now it's saying tap to turn on the spotlight. It will turn off automatically in 180 if there is no motion detected. Okay, if I just click away, and there you go, presented. Let's check out the lag on this. About a second, so that's pretty good. Let's quickly go through the options you have available. So let me click in the corner here. Channel selection, so you can give the camera a channel name. So if you had multiple ones, you can flip between them. Day and night, clicking on here. You can alternate between automatic, black and white, and leave it on color permanently. Immersive, that's what that gives. Coming back from there, then you've got picture in picture. This is pretty nice. So you can carry on doing what you wanted to, and you could just have the camera running in the background. And again, it is live. It's not as if it's just a static picture. So that's quite nice functionality to have. And then clicking here on settings, it's highlighting enable pushes to receive alerts. So this is the push notification. So let me cancel that one. And let me quickly run you through the options you have here. Let me click info. So in here, you've got the camera name, IP address details, the model of the camera and firmware details there. Coming back, motion detection, sensitivity, so you can adjust that level. Customize settings here, if I turn that on, between certain time ranges, you can change to have different sensitivity values. Coming back from there, then you've got motion zones. So coming in here, you can actually mark an area where you don't want to receive alerts about. So say for instance, this was pointing out your front door and some of the camera was covering your neighbor's side and you didn't want to be alerted when they're coming in and out of the house. So you literally just draw on the area which you don't want to be alerted for. If you went over, you just click on eraser and just remove some of it. So nice that you're able to do that. Coming back, camera recording. So it's on for recording. So with this feature, the camera will record video to your SD card for later playback. You've got schedule there as well. So you can set times when you want this to be recording. Post motion recording duration. So that's quite good. So after actual activity, you can have it continuing to record and the maximum value here is one minute. Then you've got overwrite. Once the capacity becomes full, it'll overwrite the old footage. So that's useful to have. Obviously, most cameras have this anyway, only because otherwise when it gets full, what are you gonna do? Manually delete all the footage? That would be nuts if you had to do that. Now coming back, siren. So this is when you can enable the siren for motion detection. If I turn it on, you've got custom alarm sounds. So default sound selected, custom sounds. And you can record your own voice if you wanted to as well. Coming back, schedule. So you can set a schedule for the siren. So I'll demo that in a bit. Let me just carry on going through the options. Spotlight, spotlight set to automatically turn on at night and it will help capture obviously any sort of movement and hopefully give you a clearer picture of what's happened. Email alerts, uh, you can get an email alert if there's activity, so email settings. So you can set it up here. Coming back, you've got a schedule for this as well. So if you just wanted it during a certain period, that can be done. Coming back, back again. Notification settings, so schedule for this as well. So you can see when you want push notifications to come through. So you could be at work, not at home during the day. So you just want notifications during the day. But if you're at home in the evenings, you don't want the notification to come through. So this is ideal for that. Coming back, back again, record audio. This is useful. So if people are talking outside and you wanted to pick that up as well as motion, this is useful to have. I'll just turn that on right now. Infrared lights, so you can turn those off. So what this does, in the evening, if you had it indoors, for instance, and there was activity sense, the infrared will turn on and the glass will reflect the infrared lights. So this is a good way of turning that off. And the other thing is about this, if you didn't want people to know that there's a camera in operation, so this is good to turn that off. Sometimes it gives a bit of an indication, or even you could use it as a deterrent, really, so people know something's actually going on and this turn, thing's turned on. Coming back, you've got the status LED. You can turn that off as well if you wanted. And then you've got delete below that. Now coming back from there, and then you've got delete below there. Now coming back to the top, You've got share, so you can share it with other people, friends or family, if they wanted to also keep and track on what's going on with the camera. Coming back from there, you've got push. So now you'll get push notifications going to this. So I've enabled that. Wi-Fi, you can change your Wi-Fi settings here. If you want to go to another Wi-Fi network, for instance, you could do it here. Coming back. 
Then you've got more user management. You can add in additional users. So by default, it's just admin. Date and time, and then storage. If you put in a memory card, always worth formatting that. So let me do that right now. Format succeeded, coming back got restore and reboot and coming back from there that's it that's all the options and settings you've got now coming on the display here you can see at the corner you can see the performance of the camera so showing the kilobytes per second and then coming over here you've got the floodlight coming on so that's what it looks like I'll show it later in the dark pressing the button here this will trigger sound alarms if I press that That's a siren, pretty good having that on such a small camera. Then, obviously, you've got the picture coming off the camera. So you've got the on-screen display here giving the date, time, and the real link branding in the corner. Coming here, you can pause it, play it again. Then you've got the speaker, so you can actually hear what's going on on that side on the camera. Turn it off, snapshot, record option. Picture quality, it's on fluent at the moment, so that's not high res. If I go to 1080p, that's in HD. If I click here, full HD here now. So if I lift it up for a moment, you can see the lighting. And there you go, there's the box for the camera. Now, clicking on there once. So coming down here, you've got the similar options again. So pause, so you can pause the stream, hit play again. Clicking on there, you can do a snapshot, and then you've got a share button, so you can share it straight away if you wanted to. And then coming over here, you've got the record. So it's recording away at the moment. Clicking there, recording stopped. And if I click on that, turns on the speaker so you can hear what's going on on your phone. Turn that off. And again, you've got the Fluent option here, so you can flip between Fluent and 1080p. Coming back now, looking below, you've got the Talk option. Click on that, tap to talk. Test one, two, three. There you go. That works simple as that. Coming out of there, then you've got playback. See so if I pick up one of the recordings it's made. There you go. That's when I move the camera. So obviously motion's been detected. Now coming out of there, and that's all you've got. So there you go, that's all the options you have available on the camera. A lot in there for such a compact camera and quite impressed the fact it's got the floodlight and the siren on there as well. Next, let's test out the sound level coming from the siren on the camera. So if I go quiet for a moment, ambient sound levels are about 36.5 decibels. Now if I hit the button, so you're getting about 88.1 decibels coming from there. Next, let's test out the motion detection with the siren coming on. So if I just bring my hand in, there you go. There you go, stays on for a few seconds. So pretty cool functionality here. So keep in mind, if you are going to use this, you'll have to play about with the sensitivity. Last thing you want is this constantly going off if there's a little bit of activity in the distance. Next thing to show is the brightness level from the floodlight. So I'll put my hand in front of it. There you go. Motion detection coming on with the alarm and the floodlight. Pretty cool functionality. So just to show, if I go to settings, siren, turn off the siren now. Let's let the light turn off so I can just turn it off from there. And if I now come in again, there you go. So you can have it without the siren as well, which is quite good. So if you did have it at the front of your house you could use it as a porch light as well which is quite useful so if anyone comes up obviously it will brighten up the area you'll get the recording as well and you'll know who's come next just to show the push notifications from the device so if I come in there you go camera alert motion from camera if I click on there jump straight on there and you can see what's been going on if you've missed it you can just click on playback and then you can just cycle through what's there. So the latest one would be right at the end, which is just up here. As a pre-record as well, just a note, you should see my hand coming in. And there you go. So nice it does the pre-record, so that ensures you won't miss anything happening. And that's one of the biggest problems with a lot of cameras. 
you'll get footage happening and being captured but it will miss the vital bit. Now looking at the camera recording option here there's nothing to say keep it recording constantly so that would be quite a useful option to have which is missing on this so if it was constant recording and just picking up the motion detection separately it would be useful only because sometimes things can be missed sometimes say for instance um, you had something going on outside of a region which wasn't picked up on the camera you could actually scan through it and then play it back again. Next let's test out the two-way audio quality so what I'm going to do I'm going to put my microphone close to the camera and then I'm going to try speaking through my phone and let's see what the quality is like so if I place my mic this sort of distance now if I leave the room Now this is the now test, this is the test testing, out testing out the quality of the quality camera, on the this camera. At least give you an idea what the sound will be like. Will be like. Next, just to show remote connectivity on here. So you can see I'm connected to my Wi-Fi. If I drop this down, turn off my Wi-Fi, give it a moment, it's connected via 4G. And now you can see play over cellular data. If I hit the play, there you go. Works, simple as that. And that's the performance on there still pretty good so just to note I haven't had to open any ports on my router works seamlessly via cloud connectivity next let me show how to set up the device to work with both the Google Home Hub and the Echo Show now coming onto the app you can see the stream running here if I come back and looking in the corner you can see login so initially what you need to do is set up a cloud account with Rio link so you just need to sign up once you've signed up Make a note of those credentials so you'll need to use that when you're linking in the service on the Google Home and on the Echo Show you'll need it to link in the skill. So let me enter in my password for my account off camera. Now I've entered my account details, let me click login and you can see two options here. So devices and cloud. Now this is quite important to do initially. So if I click on cloud then you can see smart home go in there and just below there you can see a camera. So this is where if you look below it says disable before it was actually an enable button so I've pressed it and it's enabled that smart connectivity now if I come out of this and I click on the Google Home app and to add in the service usual thing click on the plus setup and then works with Google and you just want to search for Rio link so you can see it there Rio link smart home I've already got one device and that's the camera now coming back from there scrolling down you can see it there camera one and that's the one now looking in there you can see you can unlink it from smart home and this is quite interesting so it says this video stream can't be viewed here if you have a smart display or Chromecast you can ask the assistant to stream it there so that's the one thing to be aware of so you can't play on your device so that's like any other smart camera that works with the Google Home so to initiate it all we need to do is say show camera one Sure, streaming the camera one on living room display. Streaming the camera one on living room display. There you go. So, bit of a lag Beaming there. The camera one on and that's living normal. Room display. So, so, bit of a lag Beaming there. The camera one on and living room display. There you go. You can see it does work, but usability wise, it's not so great. So, keep that in mind. It's not a surprise all these devices have the same issue just the lag time is ridiculous on them next let me show the same functionality on the Amazon device so I've got the Amazon app here going in there same thing again for skills we just want to search for the Rio link and it's that one there Rio link smart home so clicking on that mine's already enabled now coming to devices going across cameras you can see it there camera one now clicking on there same thing again you can just see the details you can't do anything more than that so now if I say show camera one okay again same thing takes a while to appear and then there's still a lag with this as well see if I move it let's give it a moment you can see the alerts appeared and there you go look you can see I moved the camera already and that hasn't even got to that stage yet and now it's got there so considerable lag no surprise there really so there you go it does work 
but keep in mind from the Rio Link app you have to enable it in the cloud option. Now just to show the picture and sound quality at a distance, I'm three meters away from the camera. I'll walk backwards just so you get an idea of what sort of sound quality and picture quality to expect from this. And there you go. And now the room's completely dark, but the light you're seeing is the floodlight coming on. So the floodlight's on and it's giving enough brightness to show things really clearly, as you can see. And again, I was at three meters away from this. Now, this is the quality with night vision. So I'll be walking back and you see the clarity is very good on this camera. Not fuzzy or not grainy in any way. I think it is very sharp and the quality you can see for yourself. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this Wi-Fi camera from Rio Link. This is the Lumus. In terms of functionality, it's very easy to set up and configure. Keep in mind it's only supported on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. In terms of build quality, good build quality and functionality wise, very impressed. It's got a really bright floodlight on there and a siren too. Compact design to it as well, which is really nice. And in terms of functionality, there's a lot of functionality in there. So you've got the push notification on there. You can have the siren going off if motion's detected, floodlight going on if it's nighttime. You can have an area blanked out so you can mask it off if you didn't want notifications for a certain region. So there you go. Hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Really impressed with Rio Link cameras. Drop me a note in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this camera. It would be interesting to know what you guys think. And even in terms of reviews, would you be interested in even seeing a whole CCTV system from Rio Link? If that's the case, I'll see what I can sort out. So there you go. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. <laughs>